Hey everyone, this week we're talking about operational amplifiers, or op amps for short, and I'm going to walk you through the basics of amplification, and then I'll show you what I think is the most useful amplifier circuit that we'll build in this class. I'm going to really quickly go through the basics of amplification circuits. So this is the main idea with an amplifier. If we have, say, some sine wave here, and it could be any signal, what we want to do is we want to multiply every one of these voltages by some gain to give us another voltage. So let's say we had an op amp with a gain of two. Now in orange, our output of the circuit would be all of these original numbers here multiplied by two. And this comes up a lot in circuits where you might have some uh, sensor that gives you a really small voltage and you want to amplify that up so that you can measure it more easily. That's where you use an op amp. So again, ideally it's just multiplication where you take some smaller voltage and multiply it to get your output voltage. Here's one of the most important op amp circuits we'll build all semester. It's called an impedance buffer, and what it does is it produces a voltage at the output that's equal to the voltage you apply to the input. So if you're paying attention, you should be asking yourself why we'd want to build this whole circuit where the output voltage equals the input voltage, right? I mean, we could do that with a single wire. You put a voltage on one side, you're going to get the same voltage out the other side. But I want to show you kind of a toy circuit that helps me understand when we want to use these impedance buffers, and hopefully it'll help you understand when it is that they come in handy. So I want to do a quick review of voltage divider circuits. Remember this circuit from an earlier video? We have two 10K resistors here wired up in series, and because those are the same according to our voltage divider equation over there, if we turn on our breadboard, we should get roughly half of our supply, which is five volts here. So we see we get about two and a half volts over there. Now my question to you is, what if I were to take a second voltage divider and put it on the output node of that first voltage divider? question is, would I get one and a quarter volts over here at that output node? And hopefully you can think about this circuit and actually start to do a little bit of analysis here. So sit down and see if you can figure out analytically what the voltage will actually end up being there. And you'll see that it'll be less than one and a quarter volts. But let's actually build this circuit and test it out. So here I've added another set of resistors in series with the first set, like I showed before, and when we turn on the breadboard, we see we only get a volt over here. And the reason this happens is because this voltage divider equation is only valid if no current flows out of this middle node here. Because we have some current flowing out to supply this second voltage divider, it's going to change our voltage here, and that changes the voltage at this middle node. So now what I want to show you is what will happen if we put this impedance buffer in between these two voltage dividers. And what we'll see is it'll fix this problem that we just observed. Now we have our completed circuit with the impedance buffer and the two voltage dividers. And what we find out is when we turn on the breadboard, we get roughly the one and a quarter volts that we were expecting. So hopefully it's more clear now why it is, what it is that this impedance buffer is doing. It's eliminating the current that was flowing out of this node. So now if I were to measure the voltage here, we would see once again that it's two and a half volts. And we're also getting that same roughly two and a half volts here at the output of the op amp. Here's the way that I think of impedance buffers in my head. I think of an impedance buffer as magic that fixes things when current flow causes problems. If you remember in that last example with the two sets of resistors, it was the current flow between the resistors that caused a problem, and the impedance buffer stopped that current flow and caused our output voltage to be what we expected it to be. And that example, like I said, is kind of made up because you would never build that circuit in all likelihood, but this does come up a lot when you're taking real measurements. So just remember that impedance buffers can be the solution to those current problems. I want to end this video by giving you some practical advice on amplification should the need ever arise. It turns out that as mechanical engineers we don't actually build all that many op amp circuits with the exception of maybe the impedance buffer we saw earlier, but we frequently need to amplify signals. So one thing you may want to do is measure temperature with a thermocouple. And if you need to do that, there's a device called a thermocouple amplifier that makes that a lot easier than trying to build some sort of an op amp circuit on your own. The other thing you may want to do is to measure strain with a strain gauge or a load cell. And if you want to do that, you're going to need to get an instrumentation amplifier. And the chip is called an AD623 that you can look up if you need it. And really, you'll need this chip anytime you want to interface with a Wheatstone bridge circuit. So that's it. Thanks for watching.